let's use this thing now, okay? So modularity. So the idea is if, we did a, if, if we'd really broken them into really perfect groups and there are actually no edges between them, right? All the edges are internal. We've really located the right groups. Then we get, um, you know, this, this, that first term, the E squared, summing up to the, sorry, A term, summing up to one. And then, you know, because the random thing, there's going to be some internal edges, but there's going to be all these edges between these groups, right? If we randomize everything. So you can kind of see that this is, going to do a good, good job. All right, so here's, here's the game. We're going to have only 128 nodes, four clear communities, and within the communities, they're going to have an average degree of six. So if you just take your community of 32, the average number of friends people have within that group is six, and each of them in a group will have two friends outside on average, right? So it's clearly structured somewhat. Um, <coughs> sorry. And then this, so let me get this back up to here. So here's the, hmm, that's weird. Oh, it blew up. Wow. I think it just completely exploded. It did. Amazing. Uh, do. I'll show you a fun thing on Thursday, for sure, yeah. Yeah, random networks. Okay, so here's the idea. There are these four groups. I've got these different pieces here. Uh, and so this is using this betweenness finding algorithm. Yes, we know, we know. <laughs> Un unexpectedly quit. They really need to change that. Like, to unexpectedly quit again. <laughs> it predictably, like Safari exploded, and we, I mean, they must have records of these things, right? Slight detour, Facebook, did you guys sort of see how much they've recorded about people? So if you had the app on your phone, and it's particularly on Android, you said, you know, access to contacts, da, da, da. You could also put access to, which of course is the default, um, to phone. So they recorded all of your texts and phone calls and, Everything else you did, you know, completely outside of the app. And it's all logged. And, you know, that's, phone numbers are really useful piece of information. Right? They, tell, you know, they say, oh, you're talking with this person. We have no knowledge of that in terms inside our thing. Yeah, it's just <laughs> unbelievable. Okay, the worst. So, um, uh, it needs to be burned. Uh, let's see. So, we have this thing, and it's a little hard to tell, but at the top, it, it got broken into two big groups, right? So it's doing this thing where we're measuring the betweenness of all the edges. We're taking off the edge with the highest betweenness. Then we're doing it all again, taking out the edge with the highest betweenness. We keep doing that until it fractures first into two big groups, and then we see them fracture pretty quickly into uh, two more groups. So there are four groups. And it's going to keep going, right? Eventually, we're going to remove all the edges, so we'll be down to 128 nodes that are not connected to each other. So the idea is, though, that this is just internal structure, right? These were random. We've, we've broken this group off, and it's just, got, it's just a random network inside it, like by design, by construction. So we should not really be uncovering lots of structure here. And that's what this modularity measure shows pretty well. So modularity, it's oriented this way. Number of edges or fraction of edges removed this way. That modularity measure is maximized when it gets to four groups. So that's, that's useful, right? I mean, it does, it's, it's quantifying something that, you know, we think is pretty, should think is pretty obvious. There are different versions of it, blah, 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 but this is a basic story. And it works pretty well. And you can see it deteriorating. And if, there's a, if there were, so, I mean, we could make something much bigger, right, that had four groups and then had, each group had three groups inside it, you know, and they, they actually had, they were differentially, you know, groups. You'd see another little kind of peak here. You'd see that. Edge, you take out edges, yeah. Yeah, so you're taking out, there are M edges, and you're just going to take out one at a time right. until it's empty. I mean, you always remember the original network, because you have to go back to the original network and say, 
you know, I've found these four groups. Now let me draw sort of circles around those four groups and count up how many edges are inside those groups and how many edges are between them and then compare that to a randomized version. And when we do that, then we get, you know, that it's, but that's not true. No, is the, so we're starting with a static network and, you know, the time we have here is just the number of edges removed. You could sort of think, think of it like that, right? The, this, but it will, t you know, from a computational point of view, it takes the longest at the start because it has to do between us for the whole thing. Take out one edge, it's going to make it a bit easier for it. Yeah. Keep doing it. And eventually, you know, you've got one edge to remove. But you mindlessly run, yep, yep. <coughs> so while this looks like, you know, it looks like that's a group, that's not at all really a group, right? It's sort of found, split this into two, you know, like these two off by themselves, and the, that's all random. And so that's something to worry about, right? So that's this point. Discovery of internal structure is somewhat meaningless. Yep. Communities are just accidental. Uh, so <coughs> Zachary, right, so you got to do that one. Um, and that, you know, it, it, it functions well there. I'll just set this up. We're gonna, we'll talk about it properly on Thursday. And it's just the start of, you know, it's one of many things to come. But here's a completely different idea. This was, so what we had was the shortest paths, which is a very artificial, odd thing to do. What you can do instead of, instead of shortest paths, I mentioned the other day, is go to every pair, and instead of finding the shortest path, put a current in and a current out, and every, there's a unit resistor everywhere, and then just measure the current, like run the whole thing, and use Kirchhoff's laws to set it up, run the whole thing, and then measure how much current is on each um, link, and then you just take the absolute value, right? So the absolute value of it. And so that more of the current will be, you know, internal here, right? But there'll be some out here, and, and this will, we'll see, is allied to random walkers, actually, right? So this is the lemming story. You're putting them in there, and they're running all over the place, and then they're allowed to exit here. So you do this for every pair, and you, you have to have a start and a finish one. You do that for every pair. Uh, and then you'll get a uh, electronic betweenness, right? So you're going to sum over all of them. It's, I'll say it's um, equivalent to the random walk between us. But you're going to end up with this betweenness for two nodes, S and T. Um, and this is for the edge IJ. It's going to have some value. It's going to be whether that node exists. Right, that, sorry, whether that edge exists. That notation is unbelievable to use A twice. Anyway, this is the, our standard notation. This is the JCC matrix, a one or a zero. And there's just a voltage at I minus the voltage at J. So we can use the, the one or zero here as a unit resistance um, kind of idea. Uh, it's the absolute value as well, right? So V equals IR, so uh, the current is V divided by R. And because our adjacency matrix is a one or a zero, uh, for their entries, we can just write it here on top. We could put, we don't want to put one over zero, that's an infinity. Uh, it will function in the right way. This is our conductance, actually, right? So when it's a zero, nothing gets through, which is like having an infinite resistance between those two nodes. This is, you know, just a different way to think about between us, right? It's going to be a little more spread out, a little more messier, right? Instead of just, you know, Instead of the beans being added to just, uh, well, they actually be divided, I guess, but between these two things. But imagine the shortest path is just here. Now we're going to have sort of the spread out thing. So what does that, if we use that as our measure of between us, what does that do? You know, how, how well does that um, stack up when we do a partitioning thing, structure detection thing? So I'm going to have to talk about it a little more. I'll just, I guess I'll quickly, we'll come back to this, but I just want to show you that um, this is the end result. So this is shortest path, um, random walk, and then this is shortest path without recalculation. And we'll, we'll work through the lead up to it. This is again, um, this is a different setup. This is for Zachary's uh, network, right? The Karate Club network. So there are 34 nodes. So this one found, the, sh the shortest part, which is what we started with, it binds two peaks in modularity, so there's a sense of two big factions, that's what this is. And then here there's a one, two, that faction is in two groups, and this faction is in two groups as well. 
So it finds that. Um, maybe you get the same sort of thing. This is the random walk or the uh, electronic between us thing. And this is to show you what happens if you use shortest path without recalculating between. You just measure between us once. So you have a between us score for each edge. And then you just, in order of between us scores, remove the edges. No recalculation. Then that gets you, like, it's a much messier mix. So it shows you how bad it is. Well, this is so rough. These are fairly similar. You have to look at this to see, you know, four is in this group, yes. So, uh, um, it's not bad, so what about this factor? Seven, 17, 6, 5, 11. Seven, 17, 6, 5, 11. So that's the same, right, this is the same group of here. As it's found up here, just different layout. So that's, you know, that's encouraging. And there are four in this group, and four in this group, they look like they're a bit different. 25, 28, 29, yeah, um, 25, 29, but these two are mixed up. And if you go and look at the original plot, yeah, see, so these ones are kind of on the edge. I mean, it's probably fair to say that you, you don't really know whose side they're on. Whose side they're on from this, <coughs> whose side they're on, right, yeah. Uh, okay, so obviously can be used for good and bad. Um, but we'll work up, we'll, we'll go through that little calculation, it's quite, quite a lovely thing. And then there'll be lots of other pieces, right? So shuffling, that's super fun. Uh, spectral methods, we use ghosts. Uh, lots of other possibilities, yeah. All right, thank you people. Office hours are next. <laughs>